Hey guys, this is Neil from RepRap Log Phase doing a tutorial on the basics of solid modeling for RepRap. Um, we'll go ahead and deal with the solids, and I think this will be done. We'll be done with the basics for this. Um, you get four basic solids that come with it. You get your cube, your sphere, your cylinder. Each one of these can be modified in shape by either dragging the edges, modifying them by scale, or going over here into properties and changing them. So you can actually change the two radiuses and the height on the cylinder, the height and the radius on or the height and radius on the cylinder, the two radiuses and the height on a cone, the X, Y, and Z on a cube, or just the radius on a cylinder or on a sphere. Um, you cannot turn a cone into or a cone into a cylinder. It doesn't like that, so it's perfectly okay with me changing that one to two, making reversing the cone. But what it does not want me to do is turn it into a cylinder by having two identical radiuses. It gets mad about that, so don't do that. Um, those are the basic shapes. Now these are by no stretch of the imagination the only shapes you can use. Um, you also have so we went down the x y axis. You also have the ability to do extrusion shapes, which what you would do is you would draw a shape, any shape you want, or you can use a cube or any of the polygonals. We'll just do it this way and make it simple. Copy it paste it. Now what you do is you actually set them over top of each other or however you'd like them to be set. So that one's actually over top of each other. Select both of them and then you click this one which extrudes between the two two-dimensional objects to create a three-dimensional object. So I've created my little box there. Now it can be any shape in any shape. You can also select multiple so let's say for instance I gave one height and the other one's not. Actually ends up creating some interesting shapes that way. So we have those that type of extrusion. We also have extrusion on a side. Now whenever you extrude it extrudes up the z-axis always. It won't extrude out to the sides. So what you do with the extrusion button is you have to select a side. So you go over here, click select side, click the side you want to extrude, and click extrude. You give it the height you want it to extrude to. Yep, and you've added two millimeters to the top. You can also do a negative extrusion if you want it. It'll accept a negative number. Um, the third type is extrusion around the z or extrusion around the z axis. So with this one, you actually have to be looking at the z-axis to do it. So so with this one, which is our third type, move this over here, move these out of the way. By the way, the extrusions are separate until you merge them. Until you can make them one item, they are separate individual items. So for this one, what you do is you draw any object you want. We'll draw a cup real quick. Not using infinity lines, but using these. So go up, over, any way you want. You can make a wine glass real quick. Go this way. Back to zero. to draw, stop drawing lines, grab hold of it, and then you extrude around a circle. 
it's going to want to know how many gradient, how many degrees you want. 360 will be to take it all the way around. So you've now created a cup. Um, it sort of makes designing your own wine glasses for a 3D printer sort of, you know, real quick and easy. Um, those are all the types of extrusions you do. Uh, now let's go ahead and do boon line functions. You have three main or three main types of boon line functions. You have where it adds two items together. So let's say for instance we wanted to add this cone to the cylinder. Where did it go? Okay, so let's go say for instance you wanted to add this cylinder. If you actually use the selector right. Sorry about that, had computer problems for a second. So let's go ahead and show you how to do a boon line function. First, let's add this cylinder to this cone. So you select the two of them, and you select boon line function, and you add them to each other. They are now one solid object. Okay. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now let's say, for instance, I wanted to drill a hole down the bottom of the cylinder change the radius to let's go ahead and say 2 and the height turn it into 20 okay so now if you look okay so you would take this one 20 is not going to cut it and make it 30 drill a hole through the middle of this one. So there. As you can see, it's going through the top and the bottom. We select both of them. Now the one that you select first will stay. The one you select second is the one that disappears. So, subtract it. You've now drilled a hole straight through the middle. Go and undo. Now let's say for instance we only wanted the union of these two. It doesn't matter what order you select them in. You select Union, which is this one. Only thing that's left is what was with both of them. Um, final thing that this program, well, one of the final things that are in the very basic stuff that it does, is the fillet or the um, is chafering the sides. Now, when you chafer sides, you don't select sides; you actually select edges. So let's go to edges, select edges here, the four edges, chafer, chafer goes off of a radius, so there'd be a two millimeter radius on the chafer on this one, okay. Now you can also, instead of it being a smooth chafer, you can do a flat chafer. And with a cha flat chafer you don't do off radius, you do it off distance, which would be the diameter of the cut. And it does that. Now that is all the basic functions. Now, I mean, there is a lot more here to do. Um, also, we haven't really combined much of anything. So the next set of tutorials will actually be individual items. We'll probably go through, make a few examples, and uh, create a few rep rep parts by hand. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please give me any criticism. By the way, I know the color's off. I can't get my computer to function right. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Have fun.